Today sees a brand new update to the content in Valamore. It's been two weeks since this continent was slapped on the bottom of Zaya, and that's given enough time for Jagex to decide what we're actually going to be doing here long term. I'm making a video on this because there are quite a lot of changes to the game inside Valamore and outside of Valamore. There's loads of new information on drop rates, things like that. The update time is ticking down, so let's get ready to explore. Here we go. We're back in the game. If you're an American, you might not realize the game goes off for half an hour every single week on an update but we're back the first new change is honestly massive you can trade in your designer's quivers to minimus i have a spare designer's quiver uncharged in brackets who would say that what can you do for me he can now give over sunfire splinters be aware you won't get the quiver back. Oh, it's only 4,000. Okay, you can get 4,000 Sunfire Splinters. At current prices, that is a couple of mil. Or you can still gamble it for the pet. Let's just trade it in for Sunfire Splinters and see what happens here. Yep, exchange it. We get Sunfire Splinters. Bear in mind, the quiver is a guaranteed reward from the Colosseum. And if you're farming it over and over, you get one every single time. So you're always going to get these 4,000 Sunfire Splinters. And that's just sold for 2.3 mil. So it's an extra 2.3 mil per Colosseum completion right now. The Splinters have dropped significantly to about 600 each on the news of this update. And long term, surely these are going to go down. There is a weird balancing act going on with how you get the Splinters. But look, Jagex just changed where wave one of the Colosseum so that now you get 80 splinters per run instead of the old 100. But that does still mean that you can farm out wave one for thousands of some fire splinters an hour as you could pre-update. Probably about 6,000 now, but still it's good. The ability to trade in quivers for 4,000 some fire splinters is a move to try and appease Iron Men specifically that have to get 150,000 splinters to permanently charge their quiver. And I think that is a good thing compared to wave one farming. But wave one farming probably is still faster for most people, considering you're not going to repeatedly complete the Colosseum after your first completion. You will still end up dying, and that will be less than five splinters per hour. Personally, I think they could have given more splinters per trade-in, but it's still a nice thing to be added to the game. It also does boost the long-term profitability of the Colosseum, but these Sunfire Splinters are not going to be high priced forever, so I don't know how much it does to serve that purpose. And perhaps this opinion is a bit premature, but I don't think the loot from the Colosseum is good enough for how hard it is long term. The uniques aren't particularly good enough by themselves to command the high price. They're already falling sharply and they'll definitely continue to go a lot lower than they currently are. It's only been two weeks, remember. Add to that, the ease of wave farming will cause these Sunfire Splinters to end up like Zora scales and only be like 100, 200 each. Maybe I'm incredibly biased and I just like the Colosseum, but I think it would be nice if something this difficult was competitive with raids, necks and everything else, but... I suppose you can't really control the economy. But you can control the base drop table and buff it. Let's give it a buff. Oh, sorry. You are on the propaganda channel. The drop rates for the Colosseum and Perilous Moons also just dropped. To the surprise of nobody, you can only get uniques on wave 6 through 11 as observed in everyone's completions. The rate increases as you go through the waves, which is good and expected. You then roll onto unique drop table where Echo Crystals are 6 out of 10, Sunfire is 3 out of 10, and the Tenalsics of Valos are 1 out of 10. And I've seen this calculated that it would be on average 93 completions to get these tunnel sticks. And for how not great these are, it just seems like a lot. Having said that though, I think in general, new items coming into the game are too many hours on average these days. And it would be just as fun to cut them back a bit. Like 93 completions for these, that's crazy. The pet is 1 in 200 for a completion and you can gamble the quiver for another 1 in 200. So it's kind of 1 in 100 per completion of the Colosseum, which I think is reasonable for the pet. I just think some of these other uniques are a bit too rare for how not great they are. As for the Perilous Moons, the drop rates are 1 in 14 for completing a run. So essentially the same as a Barrow's run. Only here, you can't get dupes, which is... A Amazing! Jagex, more of this stuff. Respect people's time. Getting dupes is irritating. I love this so much. Great content. The next change is to do with Sunfire rune crafting. If you didn't know already, you can take Fire Runes, Sunfire Splinters, and Pure Essence along to a Shrine of Ralos and use those to make Sunfire runes. This method was actually bugged on release, which turned it into the best rune crafting method in the entire game because you got XP per rune made 
rather than essence crafted. So you could do the sweaty methods where you bring tons of your friends and all trade each other rune essence and instantly use it on the altar. This was giving over 400k XP an hour and I believe with lava runes it's around 300k for that same method. But that was nerfed, the XP was reduced and now the XP has been re-increased. But not to the old levels. From my testing, doing this by yourself is around 70 to 80k XP an hour. I'm not the best rune crafter and I'm not too familiar with the rates but I believe with the colossal pouch these days days you can get a lot more from lava rune so it's not that competitive of a method also with current prices you're using one sunfire splinter to generate three sunfire runes and that's not economical you actually lose money but eventually i think the sunfire splinters will go down in value a lot and the sunfire runes may be profit and it's decent xp so watch this space dude this is the unkempt untanned version of me at the ge <laughs> sorry i'll just get around bullying people before today's update when using the miraculous is you could choose between crush crush and crush today's update is pretty big for these bad boys because now you can choose between crush crush stab and crush now these things already had 115 stab bonus which called for the addition of the stab option don't forget that when wearing the whole cheater cosplay you're attacking faster a lot of the time so this is a really good option for stab 115 stab bonus and 81 strength compared to a zami haster and dragon defender that has 110 stab bonus and 81 strength this is literally better with the set on top of it, it's a really, really good stab weapon. In other news, Iritar is now stronger than Haralandatar. They used to have the same stats on release for some reason. I have no idea why, but now you can hit more with your Salamander. Another hot topic of discussion is prior to today's update, a common strategy in the Colosseum was to carry around an extra ranger with you that would only ever have a max hit of one. And then if you ever needed to heal up in a wave, you would then use a Saradamine Godsword spec on the ranger and recharge for max health. You can still do exactly the same thing. You can carry a ranger around with you that you can then use an SGS on. But the ranger no longer has a max hit of one. It does actual damage to you now, which I think is fair and does make sense. I can still carry it around with me, but I just have to pray range and make sure I'm not getting attacked by anything else. The next update is one to the famous light bearer. When special attack is about to hit a new threshold, normally wearing the light bearer would set it back. But now it carries on going to that 60%. The elite clue step which required you to equip the full Sunfire set now requires you to equip any piece of the set which is a quite a big change. Rejoice. Also next week Undead Pirates are coming out which is a new wilderness update along with changes to the wilderness agility course and they're removing the PJ timer on worlds 319 and 319 which is huge. That's essentially the old wilderness back as it was pre-2020 or whenever they made the change towards the PJ timer. But perhaps the most striking and most talked about aspect of today's blog and today's update is what's not there. There is no discussion at all about changes to modifiers in the Colosseum. A lot of people are angry that some modifiers are run-enders. I can't say I share that opinion because I think there is always something viable to pick. In my opinion, the only two modifiers I never pick right now are Doom and the Doom Scorpion, but there are only two of the modifiers. You get a choice of three modifiers, so your run is never, in quotation marks, ended by the modifiers. Bees are manageable, Relentless is manageable, and Totemic is manageable. I get it, they're not optimal, but you shouldn't be able to just waltz your way through a Colosseum run with optimal modifiers selected on every single run. Surely that would be very boring. There will always be a difficulty gradient within the modifier system, so it's always going to feel like, ah, oh, I just got the two worst ones, no matter what you change these to be. In fact, when you think of any set of modifiers, the bottom two will never be picked under any circumstances. It literally doesn't matter how you change them. Having said that though, I think at least the Doom Scorpion probably does need a rework because it's horrific. There's been a development. Monsardi has just posted this list of potential changes to modifiers in the future. Now these are potential, they're subject to feedback, but I think it's important just to go through them and see what they're about. For bees, they will essentially be slowed down. Longer delay before spawn and longer delay before moving. I think that's completely fine. Like I said, bees are not great, but they're manageable at the moment. I think that would make it a better option for everyone. I'm okay with that. Now, Doom is a contentious one. Doom is applied every time you get hit off prayer in the Colosseum or you get hit by the Scorpion. Once you reach 20 Doom, you're completely dead. They're proposing that they change it so Doom resets back to zero at the end of each wave. I think that's a good change. And the player will die after reaching 10 stacks of Doom to counteract that. I think overall that is 
positive. It's still difficult. This will probably be taken by very skilled players, which will give them a much easier time, but it can all go wrong. So high risk, high reward. I think that's in a better spot. It's not unrunnable. Doom Scorpion removed. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it was just bad. So I'm okay with that. Manti Mayhem is a new modifier where Manticore Orb attacks become stronger each time it's chosen. So missing your flicks is more punishing. It wouldn't change how many times you need to flick. That sounds like a free invocation. I don't think that really needs to come in. Why, why do we need to give everyone two freebies or a couple of freebies? Oh, I don't know. I don't really like that. Unless it's really punishing. Then, yeah, I guess it's all in the numbers for Manti Mayhem. But... I don't know if I'm really feeling it. My AP is going to be fixed, so you can't auto-cast spells without being affected. I think that's fine. That's basically just a bug fix. Relentless used to be that you always get hit off prayer, and that damage becomes increasing with the levels you choose. This Relentless changes it so stack 1 ignores 33% defense, stack 2 ignores 66% defense, and stack 3 ignores all defenses. I don't know about this. That seems way too easy to me. Yeah, nah, I'm not a fan of that. Just leave it how it is. Like, it's, it's okay to have harder modifiers because it spices things up and forces you into a corner you have to navigate out of. Not a fan of that, it's too free. Totemic will increase the cooldown before spawning another totem and the healing will be reduced. I think that's reasonable because the main issue of Totemic is that you get all your stack set up and then the totem really throws you off, which I think would be present if they changed it in this way. So... Overall, decent changes. I do have slight concerns that they're going to make it a bit too easy. If they give you a few more easier modifications, that really does have a compounding effect on the overall difficulty. Overall, I actually think the Coliseum is in a reasonable spot. Yes, it could do with some touch-ups in terms of the modifiers and mechanics and massively increased drop rates. But other than that, <laughs> I think it's good. I don't know. I've been seeing a surprising amount of negativity, to be honest. The next exciting news is that Creator Crafted are actually polling which plushies they're going to release next you can buy all these ones right here baron jad or bloodhound all that sort of stuff but they're running a poll so get your votes in who do you want to see next on the store i'm gonna pick kbd i really do recommend checking out the store the vast spots are so cool from toa to cox to pk to a where's wally mouse pad i've actually got the poster of this which is super sick even the led signs have seen an increase in the product offering with max capes fire capes dds different types of twisted bows and more shields from divines to arcanes to spectrals. When you use code SOLO at checkout, you get 10% off and it helps me out massively and it's very much appreciated. I also guarantee that you'll find something that you like on Creator Crafted. So check it out. Link is in the description and I'll see you again very soon.